This walkthrough is going to cover how to automate your feet analyses through FSL's .fsf files. So first thing to know here is if you go and you open up feet and you click on load, each time we've run an analysis in each of these output directories, such as output.feet, there's a file called design.fsf. So if I double click on that and load it, you notice that everything that I did in the first run has been automatically loaded in here. All of my options, all of my text files, everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a directory called temp in here and I'm going to copy that design.fsf file into this temporary directory. So with this design.fsf file, I'm going to open it up briefly to take a look at it. So here you can see in text form everything that we filled in in the FSL GUI. So all the options we wanted, for example, what stages we wanted to run, do we want balloon help, for example, and what output directory did we want. I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, temp underscore run 01 for now. So now when I run this, there will be a new directory within this temporary folder called temp underscore run 01, which will do the same analysis that was done before. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more here. Um, also notice here, this is the run of fMRI data that we used and input in there. We can, we're going to change that later. And also, as we get down to the timing files, here you can see the timing files right here. That's something else that we're going to change. But for now, oops. if you want to execute a design.fsf file, just type in feet, that's the command, space, design.fsf. So now you hit enter, and as it goes, you can see it does the exact same thing as we did the first time when we ran it from the FSL GUI. I'm not going to have the whole thing run, but just be aware that it's there. And that it's output everything into this new folder, temp underscore run 01.feet. Move that for now. Okay. So that's all good. But now if we want to make this more efficient and automate it, you can open up design.fsf with your favorite text editor, either VI or in this case, I think gedit is also pretty useful. Just something that has a search and replace function. Okay. So what do we want to search and replace for? Well, first thing is we want to go to this line right here which is 40 AVW, same thing as FSL data, or feed directory, and I'm going to change this to S006 because that's the next functional run. Scrolling down, we see that each of these text files has something like tap left underscore one to represent run one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search and replace and replace underscore one dot txt with underscore two dot txt. This is to represent that we're at, now we're looking at the next run, run two. Okay, so that made all the replacements. You notice that all these are now run two. Okay, breathe is run two, hold breath run two. That all looks great. So I'm gonna save that. Exit out of that. And, oh, one more thing I'm gonna change is the output directory. So instead of temp run zero one, it's going to be temp run 02. And that's it. Now all we have to do is type in design.fsf and away you go. So this is very useful because if you have access to a uh, shell scripting program like SED, which comes with all Unix programs, you can use that to set certain variables in each of those fields that I was just talking about, for example, that underscore one that represented run one, you might want to create a generic design.fsf file, which just has, say, you know, run number instead of underscore one. And then using a search and replace 
function from the command line, you can replace that instance and you can go through some sort of for loop. And therefore you can go through every run and do the feed analysis for each one. The same logic applies to higher level analyses for gfeed. And I'll be posting some example scripts on my blog, andysbrainblog.blogspot.com, to give you a better sense of how you can do that. Again, you can use any program, any editor you want, but if you use this approach, you save yourself a lot of time, and also you make it more uniform, as opposed to pointing and clicking through every possible option in feet. So, once you have this under your belt and you know how to use it, this will make you a much more efficient FSL user, it'll make your analyses go much faster, and it'll increase your confidence using FSL. So that is just a basic overview of how to run a simple FSL analysis, start to finish. This has been a pretty straightforward, uh, almost contrived data example. It's very simple. Nobody runs experiments that are that simple, straightforward. I mean, they don't use two runs. They don't just use left and right button presses. But the point was we knew that it was supposed to elicit a very robust, easily interpretable result. And... So therefore, I hope that it helped out, and stay tuned because we'll probably have more tutorials covering more advanced features of FSL. So, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.